What's going on YouTube? Craig here from All Tech Together coming at you with another product review. Sorry it's been a while, but life happens, but I'm hopefully going to be doing more videos here more often. But today's product we're going to take a look at is another gaming keypad, or as I call them, speed pad. Now this one's from Wish. It is called the K50. Um, there is a ton of companies out there that make this a rebranded. So there's no one company sort of thing, but if you Google K50, you can buy these guys all over the place. On Wish is where I got mine. Uh, I think I saw some on Alibaba and just all over the place. But in the interest of full disclosure, I did purchase this with my own money. I think it was like $35 Canadian. So my review is mine and mine alone. So with that out of the way, let's get into the review. So before I get into the review, I want to show something. Now, I know there's this like old adage that says don't judge a book by its cover. So when I opened up my mailbox and this was the box that the K50 came in, uh, there is no branding. There's just a little QR code down here. It was bent up just like this. I thought to myself, uh oh, we are in for a ride, Craig. Got it in the house, opened it up. Inside was the actual unit itself and then just a sheet of instructions and I'm gonna kind of go over these instructions just just briefly because they're fairly straightforward But the unboxing of this product was to say on a scale of 1 to 10. It was zero uh, It was like they just shoved it in a box now for 35 bucks I'm not gonna you know knock it too hard and again. It was off wish it is what it is, but I just thought I'd bring that up because I thought it I thought it was pretty funny. So when we look at the instructions here, it just kind of breaks down what we've got, how we've um, sort of the um, product size, the weight, a 382 grams, 35 keys, uh, wired USB. So it is a wired USB A cable. It's not attachable. More on that when we look at it, and then just about the other bunch of other stuff. But the most important part of here is is it gives you instructions on how to change your product. So it just gives you how to change the RGB because this is lit. This is not per key lit, but it is lit with LEDs. So a little bit more on that later. And then it tells you how to change the macros because there are six dedicated macros. So it is nice. It gives you it in, in, in full English, which is nice. And then it gives you in, I think, full Chinese on the back. If you read Chinese, I do not. So it's nice to have the full English. And this is kind of what puts it a, uh, apart from the Allura, Allura one that I did some time ago. There were no instructions. It was very challenging to sort of figure out. I actually ended up sending it back. It wasn't for me for that price. Um, but hey, there's lots of these out there. So here we have the actual unit itself. And it is basically all plastic. And it doesn't feel super high quality, but nor should it for, like I said, $35 Canadian. It's got a, actually a decent rubber wrist rest here at the bottom. It I've been using this thing actually for a couple months now. Uh, usually I just test for two weeks, but this one sort of slipped into the cracks uh, and when I got busy. But I've been using it for quite a bit. And it gets the odd little fleck of dust or dirt or stuff on it, but it stays relatively clean and it feels still nice. Um, it's not adjustable, so it's not like the razor ones where you can adjust this at all. It's only this. So if you buy this and you're like, nah, this isn't comfortable for you, there's no way to change it. Then we have the buttons. Now, this is a mechanical keyboard. So under each one of these is a blue mechanical switch. And that includes the G keys as well. They're mechanical. Um, I don't know the maker of these mechanical switches just because they're probably an off brand. They're certainly not a cherry or anything. I know I can see just a small little bit of writing down there, but unfortunately I can't make that out, but they are a blue mechanical switch. Again, I don't know how long they're going to last, but $35 again, I'm going to keep coming back to that price because I think it's a pretty decent price for this kind of a setup. When you look at guys like Logitech who are asking over $100 for one of theirs um, and 
to be honest, when I get into the review, I'll kind of give my thoughts on that. So you have the six G keys. Now they are set to F1 to F6, but you can change them up. This is kind of going to get to one of my um, dislikes of this product. Yes, you can change the G keys from something to something. Unfortunately, you cannot change it to any key on another keyboard. So let's say you had this hooked up and then you had a small little 10 keyless and you want a G1 to be semicolon or something. You can't do that. They won't work in tandem together. So you can only change the G1 key to a key that's already on this board. Uh, I don't see a point in that just for the simple fact of it's already there. This is such a small keyboard. Um, so I don't really see that as much of a of a thing for macro editing, let's say. The other thing I found with the macro editing, you hit function and then you hit the G1 button to change G1. And it, and it brings it out in the instructions how to do this as well. So you don't have to memorize it off me, obviously. So you do that, it starts to blink. Everything's good, everything's happy. You hit a button, hit F function and the G1 again, and it changes it to whatever button you pushed. Great. It took me forever and a lot of frustration, probably about an hour. And I don't know, they tell me in the in the instructions, if I want to change it back to F1, hit F1 and G1, and then it will go back to F1. It took me about an hour to get it back to go to F1. I don't know if I'm just ridiculous and I don't understand how to do it. Maybe mine just derped out a little bit, but it took forever. So I don't even try to change those anymore. What I'll simply do, just leave them as F1 through F6. And then in the game itself, if I'm like, oh, you know what? I can't reach the T button very easy, which is way up here. And I want to change G, I want T to be G1 instead or F1 instead. I'll go into the game itself. And if G is grenade, I'll say, no, I want grenade to be F1 now. And then I can just sort of reach here or something like that. It just makes it a little bit more user friendly and a little bit easier for me. Um, so that was kind of like one little disadvantage there. It's just it's not super convenient. It's not like a Razer software where it's like super simple. Uh, some of the things I do like, however, on this, and there's quite a few, is I like the form factor. It's small. It's really good for FPS games if you are an FPS player because it's kind of got everything you need here. And it's going to give you way more room for your mouse, which you can lower that DPI and things are going to go great. The other thing I really like about this is the space bar. The space bar fits so nice in my hand and it just fits. And let's see if I can get a better look here, right? It just, it's right underneath your thumb. And I know it's not a big deal uh, with a keyboard where your, your thumb still sits kind of like on the space bar, but this is just a much more natural spacebar location for me, which is super good for me. Uh, I, I really like it for FPS games. If you're playing something a little bit more elaborate, I, I think if you were playing like an MMO or something where you need that much more buttons or that many more rather, I wouldn't go with something like this. But for a good little action adventure game, Tomb Raider, um, any MMOs, Overwatch, things like that, this is going to do just Fine. On the back, it's got some nice rubber feet. I've never had this thing move in any of my gaming sessions, which is great because that would be annoying as all get up. It is hardwired in. There's no detachable cable here, but again, you probably wouldn't for 35 bucks, right? You're not going to get the whole buffet and dessert and leftovers to take home. You're going to get just the bare minimum. And that's kind of what you got here. But that's all I kind of wanted. This is by far the best game pad or speed pad that I have reviewed so far. It's better than both of my Logitech, or sorry, both of my Razer ones rather. I have the Orb Weaver and the Tartarus V2. Those are on the shelf. This I like better than that. This is considerably better than the Allura one I had. Sure, has less buttons, but I don't need that many buttons on my one hand. This is nice, clean, simple and i would recommend this if you are in the market for something like this i would recommend this one i would recommend it 100 percent. i can't guarantee how long it'll last but let's say you get a year out of it a year for 35 bucks 
isn't too bad. I know a lot of people on the internet there, their razor ones only last a year and then things start, the glue start coming off. Those are $135 or more. So cost to, um, to value here is fantastic. So I hope you liked this review. If you have any questions, I'm really trying to grow my uh, subscriber count here. I want to see that number get up, not because I want to make money doing this, not because I'm going to, you know, be the next big YouTuber. No, I just like to help people. So if you could hit that subscribe button, if you like what I'm doing, if you don't like what I'm doing, do not hit the subscribe button just because you feel like you have to. I'm trying to be a different type of YouTuber here. I'm, I, this isn't a business for me, let's say. This is just a hobby. And I really think that's what YouTube is about. The, I see a lot of big tech tubers out there who are doing all these big thousand dollar speakers or oh i hear i'm doing this smartphone i'm going to compare it with this smartphone and they buy both these smartphones i can't do that so i'm going to focus more so on the the budget stuff i'm going to get the odd big ticket item because usually i like to buy it for myself but i'm just hoping that there can be some support for the little guys not just the big guys so with that out of the way guys hit that subscribe button leave comments leave questions and i'll catch you guys in the next one